Now, when we talk about getting in IT with no experience, let's just be honest. You have to start somewhere. That's all right. What's good, YouTube? My name is Dewan Lightfoot. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I make content that's focused on helping you enter IT and advance your career once you're in the game. In this video, what I want to do is provide you with five practical tips on how you can get started in IT right now with zero experience. At number one, what I want you to do is ask yourself what you're interested in in IT. The goal of this question is for you to explore different job descriptions in the industry because you may think you're interested in cybersecurity, but then once you read further into the requirements and what they actually do, you may think, oh, well, I actually like data science more, or I'm more interested in being a network engineer like Dewan, or, you know, something along those lines. So what I would do is ask yourself, what are you interested in? And then do a quick Google search on IT job titles. And I'll also post some job titles right here. So you can check those out as well to help you along with your search. Number two, now that you have an idea of what you want to do, you need to build those skills. So I mentioned software development. Well, if you want to be a software developer, a lot of the resources to learn software development are free. There's a ton of videos on Python. There's a ton of videos on JavaScript. There are so many different YouTubers that are creating content around software development, web design, and computer programming right now. You can learn pretty much anything that you want and you can go as in depth as you want because outside of the free resources on YouTube, let's say you wanna learn Python. On python.org, there's complete tutorials that walk you through how to write code by using Python and it gives you examples with all the documentation. And that's pretty much the same for every programming language. The information is out there for free. You also have free resources on like Coursera or MIT, Berkeley, all of these colleges put out free courses to help you learn computer programming. So if you wanna be in that realm, there's resources out there. Now, let's say you wanna be a network engineer. If that's the case, well, the CCNA, in my opinion, is the certification you need to get. There are other certifications out there, but in my opinion, the one that will get you past those automated filtering HR systems is the CCNA. So if you want to be in networking, that's the one you go to. Now, some people may argue that that's not an entry level cert. And I think that's all relative. You may get on the journey and it's easy for you. Many people started that certification. And if you want to be in networking, I say start there. Before we move from number two, I mentioned the A+, plus, I mentioned the Security+, plus, I mentioned the um, CCNA. I also want to mention the MTA, which is the Microsoft Technical Associate Certification. That's a great entry-level um, certification for Microsoft. And then we also have the ITL Foundation Certification, which is a great certification to understand service delivery. When you're in IT and you're on the help desk or you're doing some type of desk side support, even as a network engineer, you may use... Um, Ticketing systems like Remedy or ServiceNow, all of these are based on the ITIL model of providing service to an organization. The last certification is that I want to mention when we talk about getting skills is around the cloud. If you've done your research around job titles in IT, you've probably heard of the cloud. Well, certifications around that area is going to be your AWS certifications, your Google Cloud certifications, along with your Microsoft Azure certifications. All of those will be good certifications to put on your resume to help you get an entry level job in IT. OK, now that you have your IT certification, you need to put this on your resume. And honestly, you can put this on your resume before you even complete it. If you're working on it, you can say something like, a plus certification actively working or a plus certification completion date on your estimated completion date that's common to put on your resume it'll let organizations know that you're learning that you're actively working to get into the field now along with building this resume if you've had previous work experience sometimes those skills are transferable i'll give you an example of some skills that could be transferable to entry-level jobs in it the first one microsoft excel if you've worked in an organization where you had to keep track of, let's say, the financials for an organization or some type of inventory, those inventory tools that you may have put in Microsoft Excel, Microsoft 
uh, access is still around or some type of database that you may have had to um, manage the inventory for that. Those are transferable skills because in IT, you may have to manage the inventory for, let's say, the laptops, the monitors, all of those things. So having that inventory experience, you can put that on your resume. If you were in any type of management position, your managerial skills are transferable. You will have to put that you led a team, you saved an organization this much money. Those are items that you can put on your resume that can be transferable. What I would do is work with someone that's an IT resume professional that can help you tailor your resume exactly the way it needs to be. Okay, number four is about building your brand. You may not be in IT yet, and when we talk about branding, I know I said this before that, yeah, it sounds cheesy, but it's actually a thing. When we talk about a brand, it's who you are. It's letting people know, hey, when they meet Dewan Lightfoot, okay, I seen Dewan on LinkedIn. That's the first piece that we're going to talk about, LinkedIn. When I see Dewan on LinkedIn, I see what he posts. I see what he's about. I see who he's connected to. I see what he likes. Oh, he's really about his IT skills one piece the next piece is going to be twitter we'll kind of break these down further here in a moment but the next piece is twitter a lot of people don't realize but there's a active it community that's extremely helpful shout out to the lab everyday family on linkedin and twitter so both of those are great resources to help you not only build your brand but to understand and stay relevant with the changes that are going on in it for number four when we talk about building a brand, you're gonna create a, a LinkedIn profile. You're gonna update all of the necessary pieces of your LinkedIn profile. So we're talking about your header, we're talking about your work experience, we're talking about your skills, we're talking about your, your bio, we're talking about your college education, all of those informations that are pertinent, we're gonna update that to make sure it's, it's professional and present it the way you wanna be presented for IT. You can even use the um, open for networking option in LinkedIn. For more on this, let me know in the comments section below if you would like for me to make a video to talk more about this. Um, another side note, make sure your LinkedIn profile is a good picture so they can see a professional image of you. You may not want to smile, that's okay too, but make sure the picture that you're presenting on LinkedIn is professional. Now that you have your profile set up, let's talk about how to actually use LinkedIn. As you're building your skill, you're working on your certification, you're going to post, I would say, about three times a week about your journey. If you're working on the CCNA, post what you're learning, post the resources that you're using, post the stuff that you're labbing, lab every day, post all of that on your LinkedIn, just a, a short little comment. If you're a writer, I would say write a blog post and share it on LinkedIn. This is something that employers can see when they're Googling who you are. They can say, okay, they're actually working on this certification. They really want to be in this field. So now that you're posting, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to seek out people in the field that you're interested in. Now, you can do this by using hashtag searches. So if you search the hashtag lab every day on linkedin is going to connect you with a ton of people that's posting content around networking around network automation around automation around anything it you'll find people in the industry that will accept your connection but when you connect let's talk about when you connect when you connect send a, a message say um, i really enjoyed your post on linkedin i would like to have a connection with you something simple like that don't just go connecting with people. I don't think that's really appropriate for LinkedIn, but some people do it. I've never been the type to just send connections on LinkedIn. I like to build genuine relationships because sometimes employers will reach out to your connections to ask about you, especially if they worked in the company that you work for, if they know them. So if you're connected with somebody employer knows, they may reach out to that person and they say, yeah, I'm just connected to so I don't know them. So make sure you build that genuine network on LinkedIn. Don't just connect with people, build genuine relationships and add value. That's what the posts are about, adding value. And then continue to like, share other people's content. Build those relationships. That's what it's all about. Now, Twitter is pretty much the same way. Now, you can just follow people on Twitter. That's pretty simple. But again, using the hashtag lab every day, hashtag CCNA, hashtag A plus, 
all of these hashtags, if you use those, you'll find people either selling something or they're actually working on the same journey that you are. Use those hashtags, step outside of your comfort zone, put yourself out there. You never know by sharing your content or commenting on somebody's posts, what opportunities it may open up for you. Number five, we're gonna talk about applying for positions. Number one, you found jobs that you're interested in. Number two, you build your skills up. Number three, you've updated and got a tight resume. Number four, you have your online profile built. Number five, we're gonna talk about applying for every job you see. Now, when you at number one and you're looking up different job titles, you may happen to go on indeed.com and look at some of those job requirements and you notice that, hey, an entry level position requires one year, three year, five years, 10 years, it's in all seriousness, some of those jobs have ridiculous requirements, but don't let that stop you. Apply, apply, apply anyway. Apply for every job that you are interested in because what's gonna happen is they have an automated system that will filter you out. So <laughs> you won't even get it, but at least you're applying for positions that you're interested in and you're giving yourself a chance to be interviewed. And so as you're working and applying for these positions, you're building your brand, you're continuing to learn. You're continuing to lab every day. You're continuing to build your skills. So apply for these positions. Don't let nothing stop you from getting that opportunity that you desire. When it comes to getting in IT, a lot of it is about stepping outside of your comfort zone. When it comes to advancing in IT, a lot of it is about stepping outside of your comfort zone. Everyone's journey in this industry is not cookie cutter. It's not the same. So you're going to have to be creative. I mentioned applying for these jobs. I mentioned using LinkedIn. If you're doing software development or web design, create websites, build your portfolio, use GitHub, build your repos, share those out, create a YouTube channel. The five tips that I just shared, you can use to enter NIT with no experience today. Let me know if you have tips in the comment section below. I would love to hear them. And if this video gets you a job, come back and let me know. I would love to hear. I would love to share your posts. I would just love to celebrate with you. I wish you all much success. Please like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.